This is a walkthrough of how RSVP Maker can help you get people signed up for events and charge them for an event fee. So here we have our Entrepreneur of the Year dinner that we're going to sign up for. And we can see we can sign up for either just the dinner or the dinner plus the reception, which is a little bit more pricey. So I sign up my friend Testy Tester. And we have some standard things. We want his phone number too in case we need to call him quickly later. And we want to know whether he wants the steak or the chicken or the veggie meal. And he has the same options for his wife. She likes it vegetarian. And if we wanted to add more guests, we would click here and add them to the list. So when I record that, it will come back saying that my RSVP has been recorded. And if I want to pay now via PayPal, I can pay $450. I click Next. And it takes me to a PayPal screen. Now, this is actually live. If I went through this process, the Cub Scout PAC 179 would get a $450 donation. Uh, they could use the money, but I'm not going to do that for real. So I've put some work in recently into simplifying the process of how you integrate PayPal with your site. Here I'm logged into my PayPal account. In order to connect RSVP Maker with the PayPal service, I need to get some API credentials. And if I hadn't created these previously, I would actually have to create and authorize this. It's a little bit buried down in the menus, but we want to go down to where it says NVP SOAP API integration. And it's going to give us an API username, an API password, and a signature. And because I don't want to show you my actual credentials, I've created a little mock-up here. But here's the process that I would go through. Now, until recently, you had to manually create and upload a file. One of the reasons I'm changing that is I'm doing a bunch of work with a WordPress multi-site setup where I invite people to come in and create sites on this WordPress for Toastmasters service. And they don't all have access to the, to the whole file system. We're actually going to store these credentials in the same uploads directory where people would upload photos. So it's accessible to the web server program. Uh, however, I've tried to do it as, as secure a way as possible, as we'll see. So if I click this little API setup button, it's going to ask me for that user credential, which is this. There's also an API password. When we record that, we'll see that it's stored in an obscure, with an obscure file name. And I've also taken some message, measures to make sure that if somebody somehow did find their way to that file, they would not be able to open it or access your credentials. Nothing's 100% secure, but I think this is reasonably good. Uh, the the old method that I used, which you can still take advantage of, is to copy that file to a different location. But at least this will help you with the, the setup process. So it now says that we have an API um, file for PayPal set up on our system. And now if I go to create an event, 
I'll see some additional options. Once I say that we're going to collect our RSVPs for this, it will also ask me if I want to set a price or set multiple prices, like in the case of the dinner versus the dinner plus the reception. Now, there are a few different ways that this information can be displayed. To illustrate, I'm going to go back to the RSVP Maker site, and let's look at that event that we were just working with. So the Entrepreneur of the Year dinner is here. If we scroll down the bottom, we'll see the different options that I've set. Now, there, there are two ways to display this. Uh, this is actually the old way that I'm going to show you. And it was set up this way because at one point I was working with a group that, in addition to selling individual tickets, would often have people reserve for a table of five and then fill in the names later. So here we would have something where we ask people to pick the number of folks that they have. And this can be useful in certain situations where you might have some people in one category, some people in another. But the new option, which I think is what more organizations want, is just to have them pick a price and we'll calculate the fee based on the size of the total party. So the host plus all the guests. So again, I can go in here and I can put in a new reservation. Also, when I respond to one of these things, I get an email confirmation that shows what I signed up to pay for. And if I want to update that, I can go back to update RSVP and this is one that I did earlier with my wife and kids all signed up for this event. And if I wanted to, I could add somebody. And now the price will be recalculated. The process of setting up an RSVP form has also been simplified considerably. It used to be you had to know a little bit of HTML coding, and you can, if you're comfortable with coding, you can still do it that way. There are some additional features you can do through code, but for basic setup, this would, if I clicked create form, just create my default form with, which prompts for the phone number with a, a uh, dropdown for whether that's a work or a home or a mobile number, but I can specifically put in phone number. And also if I want to have my meal choice, I can set that up as a series of radio buttons by doing meal colon steak comma chicken comma vegetarian. That's documented up here. And also I can check to say that that should also be included on the guest form. So we don't necessarily need the guest's work phone number but we do need their meal choice for this banquet. And then I can, I, naturally I need to include the guest blanks, but I can either include or not include a free form notes field, or include add me to your email list as a checkbox. I can generate the form, and then when I go out to the site, we'll see that we now have a blank for a work phone specifically, and we have the options for the meal included for both the host and the guest. I'll actually be talking about all of this quite a bit more in a webinar that I'm preparing for. If you happen to be watching this prior to this date, February 24th at 7 p.m. EST, you're welcome to tune in. If not, a replay will be posted to the site, and there is no charge for this one.